the patient is usually placed in a supine position, and the wrist restraints are commonly used during the procedure. A dose of parenteral antibiotic is given 30 minutes before the procedure for prophylaxis. A PEC set and a pair of sterile surgical gloves is placed on a bedside tray. The gastrostomy site is carefully selected and marked based on the following maneuvers. Apply adequate endoscopic insufflation to bring the gastric wall in apposition with the abdominal wall and to minimize the risk of having tissue or other organ lay between. The optimal site is usually in the left upper quadrant about 2 to 3 cm below the costal margin or occasionally in the epigastric area. Obtain optimal transabdominal light illumination and external finger or digital indentation. The room light are dimmed and the tip of the endoscope is directed to face the anterior abdominal wall. The ideal site is selected and marked after endoscopically confirmed digital indentation at the location of maximum light transillumination. The skin at the marked site is prepped with topical antiseptic in a sterile fashion. The assistant opens the sealed cover of the pet set and puts on the sterile gloves. The assistant then passes the enclosed endoscopic snare and peg tube to the endoscopic staff. The region around the marked site is dressed with a sterile drape. The assistant is preparing for local anesthesia injection with a 10 ml 1% xylokine and a 25 gauge injection needle. This selected site again is confirmed by applying digital indentation on the gastric wall. Advance the needle vertically into the stomach under endoscopic guidance. During deep needle advancement and needle withdrawal outside the gastric lumen, apply negative pressure on the syringe plunger to ensure no air, stool, or blood return into the syringe. Air or stool aspiration may indicate puncture of adjacent organ, such as colon or small bowel. 
administer 1% xylokine during needle withdrawal at 0.5 to 1 cc aliquot within the needle path after each intermittent negative pressure test. About 1 cm skin incision is made at the marked site with a surgical scalpel. A large bore 13.5 gauge needle with a cover sheath is advanced following the prior needle path into the stomach, guided by endoscopy. The needle is then removed. The peg wire is brought through the cannula into the stomach and grasped by the endoscopic snare. The endoscope with secured wire is withdrawn through the mouth. The oral end of the wire is usually looped. The wire tip is first passed through the open loop at the tip of the feeding tube. The wire loop is then opened and the internal bumper of the peg tube is passed through. Now the wire and the peg tube are firmly knotted. The external surface of the internal bumper and the external tubing are lubricated. We are inserting the feeding tube, usually 20 or 24 French, using the standard pull through technique. Slowly and firmly, the assistant is pulling the wire from the abdominal side bringing the introducer and peg tube from the mouth into the stomach. Occasionally, additional deeper skin incision is needed to cut the hypodermis in order to pull the peg tube through the abdominal wall. The antibiotic cream is applied around the peg stoma. The external bumper or boister is applied over the peg tube next to the skin. Adequate tension is applied on the external bumper to minimize the risk of bleeding and leakage. On the other hand, excessive tension should be avoided to minimize the risk of Berry bumper syndrome development. The C-clamp is applied over the peg tube. The peg tube is cut from the introducer and trimmed to the appropriate length about 20 cm. The Y adapter is placed to the end of the peg tube, one opening for tube feeding and the other one for water flushing. document the position of the external bumper on the PET tubing in terms of centimeters in the endoscopy report. In selected patients with an indication for post-pyloric enterofeeding, the PET tube 
can be converted to pig jejunum tube for jejunum feeding. A jejunum feeding tube, usually 9 or 12 French, is inserted through a large diameter peg tube. The inserted jejunum tube can be grasped endoscopically and dragged into the small bowel. Endoclips can be applied to anchor the jejunum tube in the small bowel, minimizing the risk of proximal migration. PEG tube placement is indicated in patients require median to long-term enteral feeding and with impaired swallowing. PEG pull method is the mostly widely used PEG technique. Appropriate patient selection, timing of the procedure, informed consent, antibiotic prophylaxis, adequate endoscopic air insufflation during PEG site selection, and optimal PEG site localization are the keys in this procedure.